With Design Center 3.0, we've added some major improvements to the way you manage centralized lighting systems, uh, especially around enclosure view here that you're looking at on screen, DIN enclosure view, RFLC, a lot of the different systems with lighting. Major focus there. We're going to focus today real quick on some of the changes that we've put into 3.0 to manage centralized enclosure-based systems. So right off the bat, um, you can see here we're looking at multiple enclosures inside of our enclosure view, and you can see that we're looking at lots of loads, lots of modules, and what's new about this view is the ability to drag between enclosures. In versions past, you always had the ability to click on an enclosure and, for example, drag, load to position, move modules around, for example, swap positions, drag loads from module to module and side to side. Whatever you needed to do, you did it per enclosure. But what's happened now is we've added, by clicking on the controller, which always gave you a graphical view of all of the enclosures, we just didn't put the loads in it. Now we've added the loads, uh, optimized the spacing so that you can take loads and move them even between enclosures, which wasn't there before. You can go still position to position, drag from side to side. You can even drag module position to module position. And this is all new inside of 3.0. Now you also may have noticed that over on the left hand side in the tree itself, we've added the loads below the module, which again is new in 3.0. You can use this tree to move positions if you'd like, swap positions one with another. Uh, you can even take and drag between uh, the tree view on the left and the graphical editor on the right. Now you notice that position 2 right here, this this blank area, we've, we've added the empty positions for all eight loads so that you didn't have to create a phantom load, if you will, a fake load, in order just to swap positions with another load. So uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, you'll actually see on this module for this relay module, we've got several of the uh, load positions not visible. And uh, what's also new in this view is, uh, for example, let's click on a dimming module. What we can see is the total wattage used here in the center, and then we also have a breakdown per line feed of loads 1 through 4 and 5 through 8 with the total used, total available, and the max wattage uh, capable for this particular module based on the uh, line feed. In this case, it's a 20, volt, uh, 20 amp breaker that's feeding this particular module. So pretty cool features that we've added. A lot more uh, information right at the main level that will allow you to manage and balance your enclosures as you, uh, as you need. Now, one of the things that we've uh, <coughs> also added, I'm going to go back to my uh, module here. In fact, let's double click and expand him out. I'm going to raise my screen up so you can see this bottom center panel. You notice that we've added this arc fault checkbox. <coughs> now this arc fault checkbox does exactly what it's going to, as you would think it would do, which is to derate the uh, total uh, wattage value. So notice now that line A went from a max wattage of 1920 to a max wattage of 1000 there up in the top center of the screen. If I uncheck it, it'll bounce back to 1920. Notice also if I check the box that I get a label for AFCI, so it's an arc fault circuit interrupter. The way you change that particular setting is to go into Settings, Project Preference, and then you can specify the wattage that you want this to be. So let's say you wanted it to be 1100 watts. So you could simply uh, type in 1100 watts or you could increment or decrement the arrow. Click OK and now you've set the maximum wattage for an arc fault breaker. And the reason why these arc fault checkboxes are important because of that sensitivity to overdraw uh, can trip the breakers. So very uh, important feature, really nice to add that arc fault uh, capability. Now I'm going to go back over to the left hand side here and I'm going to actually drag out my side panel just so you can see a little bit more. Notice there's also an empty pos <coughs> position here. So you can see as we go through here we've got an empty position 2B, empty position 3B, 4B, 
et cetera, as you go through the project. Now, what's interesting about these, obviously, is that these are, are the uh, positions because you can have a position 2A and 2B for the secondary enclosures. Now, it was really hard before in Design Center to, to manage which position you uh, had actually wired, either a 2A or a 2B, and depending on how you learned how to do your electrical load wiring and how you ran secondary bus wiring from the uh, main enclosure, you may have actually wired a 2B but had skipped over a 2A entirely. And it was hard to make a 2B without adding all of the 2A, 3A, 4A, and then you had to go back and add 2B, 3B, and 4B. Anyways, point is, you can now drag that position from 2A. Now, 2A is empty, and you now have the 2B enclosure. Or you can take it back from 2B to 2A. So we've actually added those empty positions for the enclosure position as well, so you can manage the enclosure uh, wiring as you have uh, done uh, for the particular job with Infusion. So that's a really nice uh, new feature. Now, one of the things that I'd like to uh, also showcase uh, here for, for you with Enclosure View is the ability to create what are called enclosure groups. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this particular enclosure and we're going to assign him an area. So in this case, let's go to the uh, second level, upper level equipment room. All right, so that's where this is going to be assigned. So what I did is I actually said to Design Center, I'm going to put this enclosure in that area. So now if I go to the area view and I take a look at the uh, second floor, right, upper level, the equipment room, you notice I have this icon next to the equipment room and my enclosure shows up in there. Now what I'm going to do uh, now is I'm going to specify in area view what, what loads in this project are supposed to go be added to that enclosure because in times past when you added loads and you hit control L or you dragged them into the area view they just assigned the load to whatever position was available on the next available module. Well this way you can manage if you've got an enclosure in the upstairs and you've got an enclosure in the downstairs and you've got an enclosure out in the wing, you can manage what loads by default as you build your project get added to which enclosure. So I've now added an enclosure to the equipment room, which means I can now go, let's say every load in the upstairs is supposed to go to the upstairs equipment room enclosure. So what I do is I right click on the upper level and I say select enclosure location and I pick the upper level equipment room and I click OK. Now what that means is, and you can see there's a new icon here next upper level, but what that means is every time I add a new load now it will go to that equipment room enclosure uh, specifically. It won't go anywhere else and if you run out of modules or enclosures it'll keep adding and keep adding it until you uh, hit the uh, maximum system which you'll never do. Okay, so that's a really uh, integral part of the uh, new way to handle enclosure groups. This is brand new to Infusion. There was a similar method called enclosure groups in, uh, in QLink. This is called enclosure locations or enclosure groups and that's how you assign and set those. So the last feature we'll be talking about with enclosure view and there's been a fair number we've talked about today uh, has to do with uh, what we call fixture definitions or fixture schedule management. So those of you who are in this project managing the sconces, the cans, chandeliers and the like and working off of floor plans and want to manage those together, I think we've added something that's going to make your life a little bit easier, more accurate for the project uh, from a fixture management perspective. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we're going to go to the style and profile view. Now in this project I've already added a few of these fixture definitions. You can see they reside together with keypad styles, button styles, LED, etc. Uh, power profiles, these fixture definitions are treated generally like this global object, uh, much like LED styles, but they're for fixtures. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and created three of them, ceiling cans, pendants, and sconces. And you can see the information that is uh, presented and available. The way, the way we would uh, add these as an example is right click and add fixture definition and you can see the options that you're given the name the type symbol which is found on your floor plan 
the description, manufacturer, model, type, etc. The number of lamps in the fixture, what the power is uh, per lamp, uh, the icon that can be used in Design Center so you can recognize it, etc. So you fill all that out. For example, with these, uh, the ceiling cans one that we created. Um, type symbol is C1. It's a Minka Lavery brush nickel six inch recessed uh, fixture. Uh, model number, there's the skew. It's an incandescent uh, fixture. It's got one lamp in the max uh, lamp that will, that it can uh, hold is 65 watts and I've chosen the uh, can icon. So let's say, for example, now in this project, I've added, um, I'm going to add a new load. So I'm just going to hit Control L real quick. And it's going to take me to where my load is. So what you would do at this point, as an example, is you would give this load a name. Maybe it's in the closet, uh, for example. Maybe it's in the bedroom. So let's drag this over to the closet. And we're going to say in the closet, this uh, particular uh, load is going to utilize the ceiling cans fixture. Okay? And that now adopts, this load adopts all of the properties that we specified as part of that fixture definition earlier. For example, the fixture power and a quantity of one. Now, how many, if you will, uh, are going to go into this closet? How many uh, fixtures are in this load? So I'm going to say there's four fixtures. So I type in four, I hit enter or tab and the total power is now calculated correctly for me. So I've got four fixtures on this load. The fixture power is 65. The total load wattage usage is 260 watts. And that's all changed. And of course, you have your standard uh, power profiles applied. The other load settings are as normal, contractor number, et cetera, et cetera. So the nice thing about this is the flexibility of managing all of the fixtures in a project. So let's say, for example, you were to now go back to that fixture profile and change its max wattage from 65 to 50, and you change the model number, this load and all others would specifically change to that new max wattage. So the max wattage would now change from 260 to 200 because it's a global type of style, a global type of profile. So go to your styles and profile view. Go to your fixture definitions, create the fixture schedules that you're going to be using in the projects to begin with. That's what I would do. Start off with those, and then as you add loads, assign them the uh, particular fixture definitions or fixture styles, fixture profiles that you're going to be using in the project. And we're going to continue to add the uh, features to this. Uh, there's a whole report section for this as well uh, that's brand new uh, in reports the fixture schedule that will tell you all the information that you've got for each one of those, the description, the manufacturer, the model, the number of loads that are using that, etc. So really powerful tool uh, that we've added to Design Center 3.0 and excited to add. So.